Hey guys, Mr. Backward here. This is part one of lesson 4.3. We're going to take a look at some right triangle trigonometry. So there's only one objective. We are going to evaluate trig functions of acute angles within right triangles. When we're doing trigonometry with a right triangle, we're going to be focused on setting up ratios using the sides. So right now our angle theta is down in the bottom right hand corner of our triangle, meaning if we go all the way across the triangle, that would be our opposite side. The leg right next to our angle theta is our adjacent side, and then the longest side directly across from the 90 degree angle is our hypotenuse. Now you guys might remember setting up these ratios from like a geometry class, taking a look at a right triangle, but I'm going to run through them quick just to refresh our memory, and then we'll look at those reciprocal functions. So in order to set up the sine, what we'll do is we'll take the opposite side over our hypotenuse. For the cosine, we take our adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and for the tangent we go opposite over adjacent. You guys might remember from geometry we had this little abbreviation that we used to help us remember what sides we used. It was SOHCAHTOA. So for the sine we use opposite and hypotenuse, that's the SO part. For the cosine, that's the CA, so that means adjacent and hypotenuse. Tangent is the TOA, meaning we go opposite over adjacent. Now if we look at setting up those reciprocal functions, remember sine and cosecant are related to each other, all we have to do is flip that fraction over. So in order to build the cosecant, we'll go hypotenuse over opposite. Similar things are happening with the cosine and the secant, this time we'll go hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent and cotangent, again, are reciprocals of each other, so we'll go with the adjacent side over the opposite side. So we're going to look at this right triangle and we're going to figure out what the values for our six trig functions would look like. Now there's a little bit of a problem with this triangle. We've only got two sides. We don't have that missing hypotenuse. Two options as far as finding this thing. We could use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or if we can recognize this as a Pythagorean triple, it'll make things really, really quick for us. This is probably the most famous Pythagorean triple. It's a 3-4-5 triangle. So what I'm going to do is set up the ratios for the sine, cosine, and tangent first, then we'll look at those reciprocal functions. Now notice that our angle theta is down in the bottom left hand corner of our triangle. When we do the sine, we want to do opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite side is 4, hypotenuse is 5, so we're just going to go 4 fifths. For the cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Well 3 is the adjacent side, 5 is still the hypotenuse, so we've got 3 fifths. For the tangent, it's opposite over adjacent, so we've got 4 over 3. And now we'll look at setting up those reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, so all I'm going to do is flip that fraction over, 5 fourths. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we get 5 thirds. And cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, so we get 3 fourths. For this next example, we're going to be focusing on a 45-45-90 triangle. And you might not remember this from geometry, but this is one of our special right triangles where there's a relationship between all of the side lengths. We're given two of the sides. Uh, both of the legs have a length of one. We could use the Pythagorean theorem to find that missing hypotenuse. So we'd go one squared plus one squared equals, we'll call this thing c squared. Well, 1 squared and 1 squared are both just 1. If we add those together, we get 2 equals our c squared, which means that our c value is the square root of 2. Now, if we start setting up these fractions as far as figuring out what the sine, cosine, and tangent look like, well, for the sine, remember, it goes opposite over hypotenuse. So it doesn't really matter which 45-degree angle we use. The opposite side is still going to be 1. So it's 1 over the square root of 2. But we can't leave the radical on the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to rationalize this thing by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. So on top we get root 2. On bottom, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just plain 2. Now if we do the cosine of one of these 45-degree angles, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But again, it doesn't matter which 45-degree angle we're looking at the adjacent side is still going to be 1. Hypotenuse is still the square root of 2. So if we rationalize this one again, we'll get the square root of 2 over 2. 
Now for our tangent of one of these 45s opposite over adjacent, well, again, we can use either of the 45 degree angles. We're gonna end up with one over one, which is just one. Next triangle we're gonna look at is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm gonna label some angles in here so when we go through and do the sine, cosine, and tangent, we know what angles we're looking at. So this top one is our 30 degree angle. This one on the bottom right is our 60 degree angle. We can do a little bit of work here to find our missing third side. So we could go one squared plus x squared equals two squared. If we run through and do that, solve for our x value, we end up with this missing side being the square root of three. So let's focus on this 30 degree angle and set up our three different trig ratios. If we do the sine of our 30 degree angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's a half. For the cosine, we go adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, this time adjacent is the root three and the hypotenuse is the two. For the tangent of our 30 degree angle, we'll go opposite over adjacent, so that's one over the square root of three but we have to rationalize this thing by multiplying top and bottom by root three. So we get root three over three. If we look at that 60 degree angle, changing things up just a little bit. So the sine of 60, this time we'll go opposite over hypotenuse. So root three over two. For the cosine of our 60 degree angle, we do adjacent over hypotenuse. So that ends up being a half. And for our tangent of the 60, We'll go opposite over adjacent, so that's root three over one, but that reduces down to just the square root of three. Now those three angles that we just got done dealing with, the 30 degrees, the 45 degrees, and the 60 degrees, those angles are gonna be really important to us as we're going through and doing all of this trig stuff. So we need to be very, very familiar with these uh, both in terms of degrees and in terms of radians. So knowing that the sine of 30 degrees means exactly the same thing as the sine of pi over six, and that's just a half. We have to be very comfortable looking at the sines, cosines, and tangents of these angles. So we need to start learning these, memorizing these, make flashcards to study these, but we absolutely have to know these values. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.